terrorism that Pakistan has been dealing with. And uh, because of this, there is a kind of a divergence in the methods to deal with terrorism between the two countries. And another important uh, point is that Indian leadership has come to the conclusion uh, that, um, that if India builds pressure, a diplomatic pressure, a kind of propaganda against uh, Pakistan, then Pakistan will be forced to take action against the groups that India has been naming from uh, time to time. But in my view, this policy is counterproductive to India's objective of convincing Pakistan <coughs> to target certain organizations which they identify. Because these organizations that India names use Indian propaganda to entrench them in Pakistan. The more India engages in, uh, the, uh, engages in propaganda against these organizations, the stronger these groups become in Pakistan for a number of reasons. And this reduces space for the Pakistan government to go after these particular um, uh, organizations. And I think there are two additional factors that uh, need to be uh, taken um, into account, which need to be moderated. I think both have been mentioned by the earlier speaker. I may refer them very briefly. India should end its policy of caution and intimidation in Indian administered Kashmir. That's important to cool down temperature uh, in the region. Second, the need of peace and stability on the line of control. That's another important thing. Therefore, uh, the important thing is that India and Pakistan should resume unconditional dialogue. A dialogue which cannot be subject to uh, India being satisfied on terrorism. Yes, terrorism in Kashmir and other issues should uh, be there. They should also, what other speaker have also said, tone down the propaganda that has been uh, going on uh, through uh, media. What matters most is political determination on the part of the leadership that they will talk. Unless the political leadership gives very clear instructions to the bureaucrats who are likely to engage in dialogue, bureaucrats will never produce results. And th therefore, the problem at this stage is that Indian political leadership is not willing to talk to Pakistan except on its uh, you know, uh, conditions. And unless there is a flexibility on both sides, I'm afraid uh, there will be problems continue between the two countries. So I would conclude by saying that Indians, and Pakistanis are not born with hostility towards each other. All this is a cultivated kind of a, a sentiment, a sentiment that leadership cultivates for political reasons. Obviously, political leaders will be concerned um, about uh, this. And there is a possibility of turning uh, around the situation. And for that, as I said, number one, political determination to talk, to resolve, to diffuse situation. <clears throat> Second, encouragement for societal interaction because societal interaction has been stopped more or less. Third, unconditional talks on all issues. And finally, to stop all kind of negative propaganda. It's a difficult thing. It's a difficult uh, kind of agenda but something that needs to be tried because it is worthwhile in the interest of people of India and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I thank uh, Dr. Hassan Askari Rizvi for bringing his political and intellectual insights the situation between India and Pakistan as it exists today. <clears throat>
and his recommendations at the end of his talk. We have come to the end of the speaking session and now we are open for questions and answers. I would request, uh, since we don't have too much time, all the questions should be extremely brief. There should not be any long comments. And please identify yourself and also the speaker that you would like to respond to your questions. We will begin from the right side and then come to the left and then do the really Thank you very much, Dr. Rizwana Basi from MD. Very brief, brief uh, <coughs> questions. Um, Rahul, thank you very much for uh, delivering very balanced talk. Um, can you, are you planning to hold a similar kind of conference in India where you can share this agenda with uh, Indian elites? Do you think there is political will to follow up on this particular agenda? Number two, very, um, has India shared any evidences with you on bilateral grounds with the UK or on the institutional grounds on Uri attack? Um, in the wake of future attacks, would it be possible if we open up access for the United Nations military observer groups to very closely observe situation taking place in this particular region, region and investigate in such kind of futuristic attacks? And thirdly, would it be possible that uh, we stop blame blame and we stop assuming that kind of response from India, thereby giving more confidence to India? Don't you think so? Any kind of Indian aggressive um, maximum response would facilitate Pakistan and would actually justify, it pos would further justify its position on KWs and thereby encouraging Pakistan to employ um, you know, short range, uh, uh, sorry, uh, these low yield weapons in such kind of um, scenarios. And then, of course, India would be held responsible by, for initiating such kind of scenarios and uh, pushing Pakistan to move into this direction. For the next questioner, please ask one question each. <laughs> <coughs> My name is Rehan Hazi. I'm a marketeer and researcher based in Pakistan. So my question is for Mr. Rahul. So it's a pleasure to have you over here and welcome to Pakistan. So if Pakistani media has to be believed, uh, India is against China-Pakistan economic corridor. So if you agree with this statement, can you please tell us why India has a problem with China-Pakistan economic corridor when it's not going to hurt India in any way possible? Thank you. Thank you. The right side, Muhammad Ali, and then you, sir. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, my brief question is uh, directed at uh, uh, Brigadier Barry. Uh, thank you for a very insightful and comprehensive talk. Uh, my brief question is basically um, based on your framework which you presented. Um, that the perceived or likely strategic objectives Please of don't India. Please repeat the framework that you presented. Just ask the question. Uh, I'm referring to the framework that he presented. Yes. Yes. So my understanding of the framework that he uh, you presented. Then you will make another speech. Just ask the question. Everybody knows the framework that he presented. Okay. Okay. Uh, he mentioned uh, that perhaps the Indian of strategic objective is to persuade Pakistani government to severe ties with some non-state actors or to crack down on them. Do you think that, uh, like Ambassador um, Coker also mentioned, uh, a muscular policy or a policy of coercion is going to make the achievement or realization of this policy more likely or less likely? Thank you, Antoine Levesque and the uh, Dublin Right of Press. Um, I have two questions, very brief. The first to uh, Ambassador Coca. Um, I think um, you mentioned in your remarks that uh, it would be suicidal to uh, start climbing uh, the escalatory ladder. I wonder if you could um, elaborate on that thought, uh, if, I did it if I did write it down correctly. And the second question is to the whole panel. Um, it's the question of whether um, there is an Afghan um, angle to uh, tensions with India. In other words, um, is, is, also, is tension being built up in Afghanistan between India and Pakistan? Thank you. Thank you. Somebody in front and then we'll have the answers. Yes, okay, uh, thank you. Brigadier Murray Whiteside, I'm the Defence Advisor for the UK. And I think my question is uh, for Ambassador Coker. Um, and it, it's this. Um, 
Do we think that the Pakistan leadership missed a trick by not condemning the Yuri uh, attack pretty much straight after the event? It strikes me that if Prime Minister Nawaz is serious uh, about improving relationships with India particularly and undermining some of the international uh, perceptions of links between the Pak state and uh, military groups, which are historical, but do exist, then it might be time to take some political risk. Uh, with potential sort of domestic blowback. Um, and with there being precious little credible political opposition to the PMLN, it's time for strong leadership, it strikes me. And, it, and, and Prime Minister now has had an opportunity to um, maybe speak out there. So um, I think it's, uh, it strikes me that Pakistan lost the sort of moral initiative by not coming out straight away. So I'd really appreciate some help with understanding uh, why uh, he, he didn't perhaps do that, particularly, you know, as he was where he was, as we know, at the United, General, United Nations General Assembly in New York at the time. Thank you. Thank you. We will uh, listen to the answers to this set of questions. Rahul, will have the floor to address the issue. Sure. Uh, thank you. So just uh, the two or three questions to me. Uh, Dr. Rizwana, uh, first. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, we are doing a uh, workshop in uh, in India. Uh, this is the fifth we've done in Islamabad, and we have a similar series uh, in Delhi. Uh, that workshop uh, hasn't been scheduled the date yet, but it'll be early next year. Uh, and yes, you're right, uh, we will have a similar agenda. Uh, we won't call it tensions uh, uh, with India, we'll call it tensions with Pakistan. But uh, beyond that, uh, I think that there will be a session. And I think the idea of this session and uh, is to get a uh, response from all of you uh, on some of the points I've made of some of the eight uh, sort of proposals, suggestions I've put across. And I've learned from the responses and from Ambassador Cocker and Dr. Azam Aksar Rizvi's uh, perception on these issues as well. So uh, this is part of a process uh, and uh, it will be a process that we always see uh, to be policy relevant. <coughs> that's, that's, the, uh, that's the purpose for our interactions uh, uh, wherever we go. Uh, in terms of uh, CPEC, uh, the question on CPC, uh, the, I think the Indian response was knee-jerk initially on this. Uh, Sushma Swaraj, the external affairs minister, uh, did uh, publicly oppose uh, CPEC when, uh, when it was formally announced, uh, soon after the announced. Uh, the Indian objection to this uh, is, uh, is, is a single one, and that is that uh, the uh, part of the projects of CPC uh, run through the disputed Kashmir region. And uh, for uh, India, uh, this was uh, a sign they had to indicate that uh, there is a dispute and uh, it, is not, uh, it is not comfortable with what the Chinese uh, could be doing there. Uh, since then, I think there is a, a wider perception of, uh, of the importance of CPC. Uh, to regional stability and uh, there are uh, views uh, within the Indian establishment uh, that feel that uh, if there is an opportunity for uh, CPC uh, to help build the relationship and stability uh, the, in the region uh, then uh, India of course uh, you know we, we will mm -hmm. not uh, be in the business of doing anything uh, to oppose it but uh, this is a view that still is to take off uh, the focus a lot of the focus is on whether a port, and as as you know, that uh, uh, India is now working uh, with Iran and Afghanistan uh, on the uh, the uh, the other Iranian port uh, uh, in that sense. So there's still an element of competition uh, here, but uh, but there could be uh, the prospect of, of some uh, degree of, of acceptance. And uh, though I don't think cooperation uh, will take place uh, on CPC with India and, and Pakistan uh, on Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, uh, I think the panel will give a better answer to and to ask question. But let me just uh, say, just address the question of muscular policy and does the muscular policy work uh, in, in a sense? You know, I think we need to see this in tactical and strategic terms. Uh, and I think in tactical terms, uh, you know, there are uh, lessons that are coming back that will be evaluated. Uh, strategic terms, I think the answer is clearly it will not work uh, because if you want an engagement. On fair terms, and we've heard this uh, from the from the, the panel uh, in terms of no conditions on, on what should be discussed, and uh, also in terms of the nature of the conversation. So strategically, I, I don't see how that's going to work. But tactically, at the moment, there is uh, is a focus on this. Thank you, Ambassador Well, you know, in my remarks, I did emphasize that war is not an option for India and Pakistan. It's 
actually a very dangerous course. I think the, uh, the answer to that is quite obvious. I have a feeling that, uh, I mean, you know, the, some of the hotheads in India are saying, well, let's test out Pakistan. I mean, let's take further military action and some of the points identified by Brigadier Barry. Uh, there are people who are saying this. Uh, and that, you know, we know that Pakistan, uh, we are not sure that Pakistan will really react the way a lot of people do. I'm not even suggesting the nuclear force at all. But there is a feeling here that India is trying to trap Pakistan into an escalatory ladder. Now that's dangerous. That's very, very dangerous. And I'm not suggesting that we are going to exercise the nuclear option. And I'm not suggesting I get onto that road. When, there, when you have the opportunity of engaging 